of my brothers and sisters in Christ, hello and welcome to that fastest 30 minutes in broadcast. I'm Prophet Johnson. But I say unto you, Matthew 12 and 36, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. So all your words productive. Do they have life? Are they stagnant? Do you have seed-giving word, life-producing word? Death and life are in the power of the what? They call it the tongue. You are what you eat. No, you are what you say. We call those things that be not to become is as though they were. There's a way to see me right to a man. Come on. Words. You know, they got to give you the hook in the song. Give you the hook in the song. You know, you got to get it up. Let your hair hang down. We could fool around. Don't you know? <laughs> I love you so. Me and you. Come on. They got to give you a hook somewhere. Get it up. Same old thing. Same old song. So therefore, for by thy words, verse number 37, thou shalt be justified. Made righteous in the sight of God. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. The Bible declares to whom much is given, much is required. You know. <coughs> Excuse me. So therefore, you don't take God's things lightly or for granted. We're in that day. Something is wrong. That's all I can tell y'all. I don't feel the truth of the presence of God among churches or people. You don't feel that flow. It's something missing. Too much is in there. You know, wouldn't y'all like to get with at least 120 saints like it was on the day of Pentecost, everybody gathered in one room. Black folk, white folks, Mexican, Chinese, don't matter. But we the real was nobody judging. Everybody coming to pray, to seek God for real. Everybody hurting for real. Nobody trying to just finagle God. Everybody empty, everybody broken. Could you imagine what it would be like to be in a church full of holy people like that? Instead of the ones that's up there in the Hollywood showcase. There's a lot going on, people. We got to get through Matthew here. On this week, y'all, let's get back over here. And um, let's look at verse Number 43, this doesn't fit in, but I'm throwing it in. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Verse number 39, Matthew 12. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Y'all see who's looking for the sign? Evil and adulterous generation. Prophesy, mama. Prophesy, papa. Oh, polar Africa. Polar Africa. Africa. 
Y'all are just so deceived. You want to be like them preachers in America? Y'all, good Lord, help y'all. And there shall no sign be given. It. What? But the sign of the prophet Jonah. See, Jesus is rebuking them for desiring to see a sign. Verse number 38. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. God said, I'm not going to show you nothing. Except it was like it was in the last days. When Jonah went to Nineveh, the queen of the south rising up, judgment. She came from the uttermost parts of the earth. See what I'm saying? To hear the wisdom of Solomon and became a greater than Solomon. Queen of the south. Seeking the wisdom of AI. Artificial intelligence. They even say now they're coming up with a life gene or something. Something that caused the people to live a long time. Like they're doing over there on some of them Taiwanese islands somewhere, them folks over there, Japanese up in them hills or something, them little old people over there live in China or somewhere, living 110, 120 years old, them little old people. Just as beautiful skin as they got. So they got y'all a life gene now, right? Take a shot. Cause you to extend your life. Yeah, they working on it. Big time. You know, Dolly the sheep wasn't the only thing they cloned, was it? Now they're freezing y'all so that y'all can live again a thousand years later when all your people are dead. Wouldn't you look like a fool waking up in a spaceship after you done left a 1958 jalopy? Here we go again. Human species of mankind. Worst of all, your creations, and they don't even know that you created other worlds and other beings on other worlds and other planets and other stars, suns, and you got created being everywhere. And we're a man created in your image, and we think we something because we look like you, and all the angels was jealous of us. Yeah. Because you made us beautiful. Because we look like you. So they desecrated the families in the flood. And before the flood, they saw that the women was beautiful. So the angels came and got them. Yeah, we know. We know. Women, I don't mean to get on y'all again tonight. But let me tell y'all something. Men of God... Uh, let me tell y'all something. Half of y'all don't have no idea how beautiful you are. Now, I'm not talking about these around here now. I'm, no, 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 God, no. Lord, I'm not talking about these little, <laughs> these, these little short, little fat, little pie faces running around here, 300 pounds and four foot tall, and think they fine with a weave. That, that, that reach all the way down to an ant pile. No, no, sir. They don't need a rake. They can just comb their hair with it. Listen. Y'all too, okay? <laughs> y'all too. But y'all got to understand women. That men are dumb. You are made in the image of God. You are very beautiful because you came double from God. You came from God, then you came from man by God. So you got double the beauty. We just got the one. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got twice. My point is this. Y'all better watch this little old spirit that y'all got that's out here messing up these pastors, prophets, apostles, 
and God's anointed in the church because preacher the devil is sending women to seduce y'all in churches everywhere. I know all about them. Had them buy a dime a dozen. Next, hello, pastor, you want to, how about trying me? Next, hello, pastor, look at me. Next, uh, hello, pastor, uh, what'd you say your number was? See how it work? You're going to line up to one of them get you. It's going to be the one you want. Flesh is not worth it. When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. Verse number 43. Seek and rest and find it none. Then he say, I will return unto my house. God is saying time to separate. Get rid of the demons and put the Holy Ghost in. I don't have time to read all this. Come back and find this weapon garnish. Nobody moved in. Holy Spirit hadn't come in. No. You got Jesus, but you didn't put nothing in the house. A whole lot of you like that. You got Jesus with an empty house. At least put a chair in there for him to sit down on. Back over in chapter number 13. Oh, no, uh-uh. Oh, I got to get this little touch. I've got to get this little old touch right here. Okay. Even so shall it be in this wicked generation. Verse number 46, Matthew 13. I mean, Matthew 12. Matthew 12 and 46. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brother stood without, desiring to speak with him. You got Mary and probably James and, and Joseph or whatever his brother's name was. And <coughs> those guys over there, uh, Jesus and mom, mother and his brothers. They just want to talk to Jesus, you know. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother stand without desiring to speak with thee. Now you see, I couldn't do what Jesus did. And I found out later that I should have did what Jesus did a long time ago. I couldn't tell my mother no. I couldn't tell my brother no. I had to listen and be happy. Have you ever been happy blessing the devil? <laughs> Thinking you're doing what's right. No, you blessing the devil because the devil using your family. Satan will use your family to take from you. So you blessing the devil. You see, you think you're blessing God, right? Mary is humble. She has no sin. Jesus' brothers are living right. Holy Ghost, Spirit feel. Fire baptized, go run on, see what the end going to be. But he answered and said unto him, that told him. Could you imagine going up to Jesus? Hey, 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 Jesus. Uh, Mary and your brothers over there, they, they want to talk to you a little bit, Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, wait, who is my mother? Who are my brethren? Y'all think? They're not your brothers. Whenever God show you, this is a hurtful thing now. The Lord help me to tell it. I got, I'm, I'm going to be, whenever God show you, how do I say it? I'm trying to say it in a nice way. There's no nice way to say it. There is no nice way. When God show you that your family is not your family, that's when you're going to hit your worst nightmare. When the Father show you that woman right there that birthed you, that's not your mother. I told y'all this before. When God show you that brother and that sister and say to you, that is not your brother and sister. 
even though you came from the seed, same seed and out of the same birth canal. That's not your mother's son, and that's not your brother and sister. Well, Lord, you're telling the story here. Let God be true and every man a liar. God said they birthed you naturally, but when it comes to me spiritually, my kingdom, my will, my way, they are just as heathenistic, just as Gentile, just as separated, I never knew them. I don't know them because they don't care nothing about me and will lie to you, steal from you, take from you, and curse you to hell and back if you don't give them what they want and you say that's your brother, that's your mother because you came out of the same womb. You better listen to what Jesus is saying, preacher. And he stretched forth his hands toward his disciples and said, look at what he's doing. Hey, behold my mother and my brethren. I'm going to show you who my mama is. I'm going to show you who my brother is. For whosoever shall do the will of my father, say it, Jesus. Say it. Those bishops weren't my brothers. Those apostles weren't my brothers. Those prophets, not my brothers. Those pastors ain't my brothers. They're pimps. Spiritual whores. They don't love me like I love them. They said to hell with you when you need us. To heaven with us when we need you. You are our playmaker. You are our taker. You are our toy boy. You are our pimp prophet. Prophet. I said they ain't your brothers. He concerned about building this ministry. He ain't concerned about your frailties, your problems, your backsliding, your hurting, your failures in life, your tears. That bishop could care nothing about you. He's focused on his wife, his children, that church, the money, the offering, preaching, and naming and claiming the same old game in it. So God let me know. They ain't got nothing for you. You ain't got nothing for them. Might as well tell them and give them their hiatus or hiatus or diatus, whatever that word is. Hey, Barbados, whatever it is. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. If a brethren is overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one with the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. We don't do that. And we claim we that's our brother. You're liars. You're liars. Chapter number 13, verse number 8. But other fell into good ground. Time to separate. Don't want to separate. No. Because we can't leave it alone. You know, I gave this story. I'll probably give it again tonight right quick because y'all love to hear this story. Especially my son. He loved to hear this story. i give it to you in about 30 seconds or a minute. But others fell into good ground. And brought forth fruit. Look at this. Good ground, y'all. What? The good word. People don't sow into good ground. People don't sow into good ground. They, they sow into quicksand. Do you hear me? They sow into a suction pipe. Where pastors and televangelists bragging about their, yet, their, their, their jets. 
in their yachts and bragging about their suits and their clothes. God, y'all. God help you. God. Material things. Let me tell you something about I don't have time. Material things are going to cause a lot of y'all to go to hell. Y'all going to go to hell because of material things. You spiritual Christian liars are stuck on junk. Y'all stuck on junk. I know some folks that don't care nothing about no material stuff. <laughs> you know, you know, you have to pray. Pray that I don't mean not take care of. That's not what I'm talking about. God give you a lawnmower, take care of it. Give you a hairdryer. I don't have no time for that. Okay? But you love the world and the things that are in the world. See, it's all right to have the world, to own the world, but don't let the world have you and own it. Because one day we're going to even judge the angels. And one day we're going to even judge the world. And God so loved the world, he gave it to us through his only begotten son to save our life. Jesus loved you so much as an individual until he gave his life to you for this world. So that you might have the right to the tree of life. I give you all things richly to enjoy. That's why it don't make no sense that we can't go to China. We can't go to Russia. We can't go to North Korea. Think about it, folks. We cannot even go to the places that God gave us on earth because the stupid, greedy, pig-headed, hell-bound men that God have allowed to be put in power and position over kingdoms because they're going to serve eternity in hell. I'll tell you the story in just a second. Hold on. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus loved you so much. And this is one of, you know, my son's favorite story. And I would tell him about Germany. I know you don't want to hear how we was in Germany at old logos over there in the Stuttgart area. Me and the brothers out there called the dogs, you know. Everybody chasing the rabbit, that was the girls. <laughs> I was a young whippersnapper, y'all, so don't, don't hold against me. Bad in my 20s, okay? Now, here's the thing. Prophet Jackson, well, you sure that got old. Well, thank you. Here's the thing. Jesus will follow you into hell to save you. Jesus goes to clubs. Angels go to clubs. Jesus is everywhere. I just know there was something wrong that night. There's this pretty little girl in black and white. I'm like, teeny bopper lady, junior high, ready for high school. Praise the Lord. I finally got me one, Lord. I said, well, would you like anything? Oh, yes, I'd like a little... Uh, Coke or something or whatever, whatever she, I, I don't know. I'm going to get me a snarls, you understand? So therefore, I go up to the bar, get a little Coke or whatever. I think that's what she was drinking. She wasn't drinking nothing else. Because she, that girl, some, that girl had another spirit. Get my little snarls, go back. To the table. Everybody else out there booging wooging. I look down at the table and Jesus is sitting right there at the table. I look and I said, oh my God, what are you doing here? The girl looks at me and says, who are you talking to? And I'm like, oh, oh uh, nobody. And Jesus is looking at me like, what are you doing, Prophet Johnson? When Prophet Johnson, then Brother Johnson, still were the prophet. What are you doing? You running from me? The cat isn't dead. And here you is up in a club, and I got your girl. I sit down and try to talk to the girl. The girl got confused. I got confused. 
Jesus was interrupting the conversation. The girl told me that I was weird, something strange about me, that she didn't want to talk to me no more, got up and left, and Jesus said, may I have this dance? And danced me all the way back to the barracks. All the way back. Men, I'm going to tell you something. When God get ready to get you, there's not a liquor bottle that can get you drunk. I don't care if you drink a fifth. I don't care if you drink two bottles of wine. When Jesus is ready to get you, there's not no more crack that can get you high, no more dope or, or methamphetamine, whatever them drugs is, is or no more fit to nail. None of that's, none of it's going to work. No opioid, none of it. If you to that point, to where you're saying, Lord, I can't even get drunk no more. I, 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 God is saying, I got this. You say, I can't even get high, high no more. Cocaine don't even, God said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting you. I'm getting you. So when you get to the point to where you can't get towed down no more, you on your way home. You might as well get you some water and get to the water fountain in the river of life because he's going to break you down He's going to crack you open, and he's going to have you to repent. And when you do, you're going to cry like you ain't never cried before. You're going to ask God to forgive you. You're going to thank God for saving you. And you're going to know that it's time for you to come home. The devil don't want you to come home. But God's got a time set for us. He want to kill you in your sin. He want people to prophesy to you all on the internet that, that, that God going to kill you in your sin. Yeah, yeah. And, and they scan people and they prophesying death on folks. Telling folks that God just going to kill you in your sin. Well, let me ask you a question. Did God kill y'all in y'all sin? Hello? Is it Jesus you're looking for? I can see you in hell. I can see just where you fell. You fell out chasing a boy and a girl. God didn't kill you, did he? Miss Holy, did he give you time to repent? Mr. Wonderful, and you want to kill somebody else. God would not that any man would perish, but that all would come to repentance. But you're so self-righteous. No human is God. Jesus is Lord, and he will never share his glory with another you want to claim him personally. Shantere, Chantel Quante, Ashane Lafe. He's my personal <laughs> Lord and Savior. <laughs> I know him personally. <laughs> and let me tell you something, you sick women out there. You better stop telling folks you married to the Lord and you don't need a man. Jesus is not your sex partner, whore. Because you were sleeping with an incubus and a succubus. Stop saying you married. To, I'm married to the Lord. Well, he married to all of us. We're the church, right? No, but you got a sick perversion. And you got demons. And you got women that are sleeping with succulent spirits. Incubus and succubus. And women don't think we as men don't know. Y'all are sick, sex, trap. Tell it like it is. So you better wake up and don't you misrepresent God. He's, a, he's, a, he's God. He's not a man for you to sit up and let me close, man, because, boy, I'm getting hot. <laughs> boy, I'm getting hot up in here. Sit up there talking that stuff. Why you say that? Because I done seen a many of you. You're out there today. Wow. 
But what about the brothers? They just need to stop beating it. I'm closing. Um, in in we 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 we're gonna we're gonna pick this up um, tomorrow night. Who have an ear to hear? Let him hear what the spirits have to say to the church. And um, we'll pick it up tomorrow after verse number ten. And the disciples, when they came, said unto him, Why speak as unto unto us in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. I explained that in one of the other messages, why it is given unto you. The enemy don't have it because they don't want it. But we're not going to read all this because I read this last time. We're going to stop right here, pick up tomorrow night, Parable of the sword, the wheat and the tares is what I'm getting to. I'm getting to the wheat and the tares, and y'all know that's where I'm going. Repeat after me and say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me and rose again. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Forgive my sins and save me. I repent and fill me, Father, with the Holy Spirit. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The best is yet to come. The way is already made. I'll see you tomorrow in the future doing a lot better than you're doing right now. Pack your bags. We're going home. Time to separate. Bye! <laughs>